and Morning, the most news in the morning, period. Weekday, 6 Eastern. I don't make the drawings. You never know what surprise you might find when you open a drawer in this Manhattan studio. Artist Bud Hopkins is the keeper of some images that will expand, blow, or maybe even close your mind. There's a photo album devoted to odd, mysterious scars. Almost like a uh, hole punch. Yeah, this is what it looks like a, um, a biopsy. Boy, if these walls could talk. There are stacks of drawings of little aliens called greys. You know, big head, tiny mouth, almond eyes. These aren't Bud's work. They come from his rather unusual assortment of friends. Is that the same person? So, oh, no, no. Uh -uh. Different. Different people. Wow. Now, the important thing about this is all of these are really old. This is right. before this face was on every T-shirt. Bud has become the father confessor for hundreds of people who are convinced they have been abducted by aliens. I mean, it sounds totally off the wall. And, and I'm the first one to say almost everything that we're discussing here sounds off the wall. But that doesn't mean it's not true. Ladies and gentlemen, tray table up, seat belts buckled. This will be a wild ride. Do you have any idea how common these encounters are? Well, my guess is that they're very common simply because I just keep running into so many cases. In 1964, Bud saw a UFO. And then in 76, wrote an article in New York's Village Voice about an alleged alien encounter in New Jersey. His phone hasn't stopped ringing since. The mass of evidence gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And that's not a pleasant th thought, you know, to me. Uh, mind you, I'm looking into something that I don't really like and that I don't really want to hear about. But I'm working with people who have suffered. It's a little bit confusing to me. People like Mark, who believes he's been abducted several times in his life. He came to Bud to fill in the blanks, the missing time which happens to be the title of Bud's first book. He uses hypnosis. Here's a tape of his first session with Mark. And there's something small and white, but it's glowing. It's glowing so brightly that I can't even make out the figure. And I'm really scared. And then it starts to climb up on the bed to reach for me. So what do you think it was? Well, I've spent many years trying to, trying to guess, trying to, trying to, you know, logically, rationally explain it. And I can't think of anything other than an encounter with beings of some sort that aren't human. Do you have any idea what they wanted? Um, no. Did you get a sense that they were threatening you? It's uh, very clinical. They don't have really um, empathy or, or sympathy. It's often like us going into the wild and tranking a, 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 a lion or a, a wild beast, you know, tagging it, looking it over and then letting it go. We don't really have a true connection to this animal. Mm -hmm. We don't really care about it. We're just examining it, and that's what I get from this. There's no malice involved. Believe it or not, it gets weirder, or as Mark put it... This is going to push this whole thing into Wackyville. Okay. Um, Let's go to Wackyville. All right. See how okay. we do there. Okay. In Wackyville, the Greys take Mark to an exam room in their spacecraft and hand him a fetus. Do you have any idea what they wanted when they gave you the, the fetus? Uh, no. Um, but that's part of my original thought process is that eventually those hybrids, as we call them, are going to populate the planet. It's a pretty frightening picture, but if you look at it, like, logically, it makes all the sense in the world. Hybrids? Hey, bud, you there? That's kind of off the wall. The whole thing is off the wall. Miles O'Brien, CNN, New York.